I'm, I'm rolling. Yeah. <laughs> I'm rolling. Oh, wait, I don't know if we're rolling. No, we're, ro- we're, we're rolling. We're rolling. Are, are, we ro- we're rolling. are we not rolling? No. We are rolling. We are rolling. Um, we're back. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> we can't afford sound yeah. effects. <laughs> yeah, we can't. We, yeah, we still can't afford sound effects. That shit's crazy. <laughs> the meme when they do it goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Happy New Year, guys! This is our first recorded episode in the new year. Yes, this is great. Yes. This is wonderful. We are moving on to wow our year three for us. Yeah, moving Tw- forward. Yeah, twenty twenty year to growth. Yo, this is episode one fifty one, right? Yeah. I got it right in, oh. in, in the 2020. Hey, Brandon, oh. Brandon Bacardi. Is that what we're doing? Oh, is it 151? Brandon right? Bacardi. I, I, yeah, I'm just saying. I, I get it. I get it. You but get I'm just saying. That yeah. was a good reference. 151? No. Um, Reliving my college days? Yeah, basically. So I want to thank you guys, <laughs> as always, for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe. Hit the noti notification button to be notified for our latest to the greatest episodes. Um, also, make sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Um, again, that's where we get everything and do everything uh, grassroots related. I'm one of the hosts, Brandon Killaby H. Hall. I'm very nasty, Simon, aka uh, Nasty Nails on a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> you did the whole thing. She did the hair She did the little macho man fingers. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny, man. Oh, body, your whole body, intro, my whole joint, man. Your whole intro Here's swagger. Here's a deep cut. I'm fuzzy, bad feet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what that one's I don't, from? I don't, I don't. Ooh, that's a oh, deep man. cut, man. I, I don't, I don't. Yeah. It's a bad boy for life. There you go. Mm, fuzzy bad fuzzy feet. Bad feet. <laughs> you don't know that one. You know that? <laughs> I don't know because I'm nasty nuts. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the little macho man. Andy Savage. I see what kind of episode it's gonna be today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh man. Let's get right into it, cream. Wait, huh? hold on. Oh, are y'all are y'all ankles all right? Yeah, I'm good. I'm <laughs> because you know who wasn't? Word. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You got me. <laughs> you know Yo. his ankles. <laughs> Yo, I was really looking I, down. Yeah, I was really hoping that he didn't have ankle socks on because that would be bad business in this <laughs> weather right now. It's like, damn, I thought that was a joke um, on me, but it's not. <laughs> We'll, ja, t- we'll tell the tell the tell the viewership. John ja Morant, yo, yeah. that, that dude's rookie of the year. That's yeah. Roy right there. Yeah. Yeah. Who would he cross for the LA Clippers? Um, Jerome Robinson. Jerome, AKA never heard of him. Nobody, nobody, him. nobody, <laughs> nobody knows <laughs> because he tri- he tripped himself out of the camera he, view he and died. the camera was on jaw the whole time. <laughs> he died right after there. that. <laughs> he literally died right after that on the court. And everybody Jerome! just mourned him right there. So. <laughs> Jerome, <my Jerome! laughs> <laughs> no, Ricky. <laughs> no! <laughs> the oh, man. Look, but what, damn, that like, was a nasty you, crossover. What would happen, right? What would happen if someone did that to you? Like, you would have to go and fight them at some point. Yo, D, yeah, you got it. You, you got to do that. You, you got to let the coach know. You got to tap the top of your head. Sub me out, man. Unless they're bigger. I got I got dunked on when I was in uh, high school. It was pretty bad. It was really, really bad. By, by a guy or a girl? <laughs> 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 I'm not going to answer the first one. <laughs> no, but um, it was uh, St. Mary's or some shit. Some star player that was coming out of St. Mary's when we made it to, like, the regionals or some shit. And my stupid ass tried to take a charge and got dunked on and didn't realize I got dunked on because I was trying to take a charge. When I got up, I'm like, I did it good job and everybody was like nah man you got fucking dunked, you got fucking dunked on that shit was bad i fouled the shit out of him after oh my gosh. <laughs> I fucked him up. wait what i forget what episode was it was there an episode where now said if like a woman tried to cross him over or dunk him he was gonna kick her in the yeah, vagina or something in the vagina. Yeah, or dunking her in the ovaries yeah. don't take him right out that's horrible that's horrible <laughs> That Taking is her, horrible. Diana Taurasi, she tried to cross me because her, her jump shot is wet. It's not happening, man. Yeah, we're not happening. What's the what's the other sister that plays on Phoenix? I, no, 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 Maya, no, Maya's on. Uh, Brittany Griner. Brittany Griner. You're not. She, she's not dunking on me. You're you're not you're not just kicking I, her though. I am giving her a forearm straight to the ribs. I, I think she'd give you a good stiff jab. To she, the probably, chin. she probably would. I, like I, she has that. She, I, I could see <laughs> it. All right. I could see. She make up that hand. That little. 100%. Going down. <laughs> I'm going down. I'm yeah, going yeah, down. I'm yeah. tackling them, man. Yeah. But there would be none of them if it were not for who? R. P. David Stern. Mm, yeah. Yeah. R.P. David Stern. Mm. Why are you looking at me like that? I can't look at you. <laughs> like, like <laughs> what the? Fuck? I can't look at you. All right, that's hold a, on. Let me yo, help you. That's All what right. I'm sitting here saying. Like, what you mean? You can't look. Can't look at her. Like, All right, she looks better. So, yeah, yeah, that is. 
<laughs> like I was in uh, trouble. Here. I was just like, I'm waiting yeah. for you to mess well, up. Well, David, <laughs> David Stern, his, his, of, well, first of all, yeah, rest in peace. Yeah, rest in peace. Condolences David Stern. to him and his family, prayers. Um, but I have to say, though, you know, his career, his, his, his impact in the NBA has been quite positive, but then, yes, but then yet very controversial, yeah. too. Yeah. 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 I think, I think it's important to note, um, I think he, I, I kind of like growing up, I kind of looked at David Stern as almost like being like a basketball player in the sense of like his stardom, right? Like when you, th- you thought about the NBA, you thought about David Stern just because of the press conferences or just all of the things that were happening. And even um, off air, like we were talking about, just all that stuff that was happening with Iverson and him trying to kind of mold the NBA as far as dress codes and just culture and all these other things, I not uh, realizing... Saying, saying trying to mold it is a, is a nicer way of saying yeah. what it actually was. Well, and that's yeah. no disrespect yeah. to him, yeah. but it was a lot more harsher than just saying, oh, he was trying to mold. It was the equating um, the, the, the positive image of basketball shouldn't yeah. have things that are from black culture and hip hop as part yeah. of it. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, when I say mold, I mean he thought he was trying to mold. I, <laughs> I don't think he really realized what he was doing um, as far as just kind of, I think at, at a certain point, you know, the NBA and just basketball players were trying to bridge the gap between between culture and, and, and just sportsmanship, right? And just wanting to just be themselves. And I, I, don't, I don't know that he ever understood that freedom of expression for for people that were coming up you know making it to the league and make uh you know living out their dreams and just wanting to be whatever it is that they aspire to be to then being restricted on 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 dress and stuff like that i mean well let's let's start with the positives right yeah Nas, you got we got there's some positive with david stern i mean if people probably don't remember but the nba was very much behind the nfl Mm -hmm. and major league baseball especially when he cut when it came to revenue Mm -hmm. and during that time it wasn't even considered a global phenomenon sport yeah. it wasn't at all yeah. and a lot of people now they may think like oh my gosh i can't believe yeah the nba was very much behind a lot of other leagues yeah, definitely. um but when he came in he assisted and help in terms of having the important business decisions um also making sure that there is a global component to it mm-hmm. and then also during that time we started to see the storyline focus in on certain teams yeah. and players a lot more yeah. and and that being cultivated and if anything the 90s is a lot more it was a lot more uh, crazier in basketball than it is now oh yeah i mean the rules were a little uh, looser but what he did to your point was with the uh usa team right he knew if he gathered the top NBA stars in the NBA and I can send this overseas and I can package it just right, then maybe we can make an impact across the world and bring in more fans. The dream team. The dream mm. team. Dream team was out there destroying <laughs> mm-hmm. teams. And these you know, these guys were asking for autographs you know, after the games. But what it did was it gave a glimpse to like everybody can play. You know, it's not just like an American football where you got to get the helmet and shoulder pads and things like that. David was good at marketing. Mm -hmm. He knew how, if I put Michael, everybody wants to be like Mike. Everybody loved magic. You know, then you got Larry Bird. He put together a team that was just, is like once in a lifetime. Yeah. You know, he took full advantage of it. Yeah. Yeah. If we want to talk about the growth, right, they were saying that, um, by the time that Stern stepped down, they surpassed the NFL as the longest. Oh, well, Pete Rozelle as from the NFL as the longest tenured commissioner in the history of major major North American team sports. He had overseen the league's growth from fears of extinction in the late 1970s to a five billion dollar enterprise. Television revenue increased more than 40 fold in that span across. Oh, excuse me, crossing the one billion dollar threshold. Mm. And then, of course, we saw the um, new teams come into mm. the fold. So you got the Raptors. Um, Vancouver Grizzlies, Grizzlies that, were, that were there for, for a while. Bobcats, now Hornets. Mm-hmm. So since then, we saw even the league grow in no, terms Lando of the Magic. amount of teams. Yes. Yeah, Orlando Magic. Yes, the, WNBA. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, he, uh, yeah. WNBA, I, yeah, I, I have yeah. a little bit of reservation yeah. Yeah. just yeah. on how it's being handled. But it's not just it's not him. Listen, it's not just... Well, they're being mismanaged. They're being it's, mismanaged. It's, but, but the NBA also... Sorry for people here. Uh, the <laughs> NBA also does not re- like it treats its subsidiaries like it's its own thing. 
Like even for like the esports, the NBA 2K League, right? right? They don't. They keep it as a separate thing, and they don't even. They don't even want you to mention NBA even with the esports league. They want it completely separate, which makes, no, makes sense no sense because the NBA's name is in the NBA 2K League. Yeah. So it's it's weird how they function. Okay, if I were running the WNBA, I mean, I and I would say I would lower the rim. I don't like the advertising on the jerseys. I think that takes away from from the players and the teams. But that's just I get it, that's revenue dollars. But it just it's aesthetically it's not pleasing to me. It's not yeah. even aesthetically. I think it would be pleasing to you if it was marketed and, and handled differently. No, I don't right, like it. Right. Because it's like the, the soccer leagues in Europe. They have Chevrolet and, you know, uh, Qatar Airlines. No, no, no. I, I, I don't like it. I get what you're yeah. saying. The, the branding of it. Like, that's what Stern always n never wanted, right? Like, yeah. he didn't want brands on jerseys. So I'm, I'm saying for the WNBA, I just feel like they don't get enough exposure. Like we, you rarely. When when's the last time you watched ESPN or just any sort of sports programming where they highlighted uh, female athletes, especially WNBA athletes, like as a segment? Like think about it. Top ten plays nine times out of ten is only like two plays. Sometimes there's way more plays than that. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it, yeah. There there there's a void there that they could fill with the WNBA. I just don't know that the ticket sales garner them to do it. Well, I mean, in terms of marketing women's sports, like, it's very possible that you can get a return on your investments. I mean, we saw that with the U.S. women's national team. With mm. It was the most sold jersey, period. Yeah. Yeah. So I just think that it's it's interesting because, like, even, even from Stern, right? Stern, we had, obviously, the global growth of the NBA, mm -hmm. the revenue and even media rights growth of the NBA when it came to televised um, – uh, games and etc. Mm. But then we saw the kind of shutdown of the impact that hip hop and black culture was making, in, or even the street was making in terms of the NBA. Now we're now that we're starting to see that, and it's on a global capacity. There are there are still things that are missing, and and, and the league can do better. But mm. David Stern really helped it get to a certain level. Now it's about how will the league itself get its other subsidiaries up to the next level as well. That's the biggest question. Yeah. And even with Stern too, I think something that we all have to keep in mind too is that, you know, and not to take away from anything good he's done, but he also seemed like he was very much for the team owners, mm -hmm. like the Sterling, Donald Sterling situation. Yeah. yeah. Nothing happened until Silver came in and was like, no, we're not going to have this. He, he got to go. It's kind of like your managers, right? Like your, your manager, if you go to report another manager, nine times out of ten, they're going to be like, all right, well, let me talk to that manager <laughs> first. There's going to be some sort of camaraderie there. You know yeah. what I mean? I don't, And I, I just think that when you're when you get older like how we're older yeah. now we understand it now where before it was like wait what is happening like why is nothing happening where now it's like all right that's the soup he's not gonna he's not gonna get him in trouble but then we also see it sorry i don't mean to mm -hmm. cut you off but it, we also see when it's not being checked yeah and definitely. what's happening with the nfl right yeah. now well, when yeah. the owners are trying to lead the charge and they're not being checked because in some capacity they have to be checked and yeah and, you know even yeah. though you mean, we all may say they have the money, they don't necessarily have to, but there still has to be law and order when it comes to the league to make sure that it runs functionally. Yeah. And the problem is, is the NFL right now, it's it's not. And that's yeah. it caused a bunch of mess for them. Mm -hmm. I was going to say that uh, the WNBA just needs, I'm trying to word this correctly. No, just for, say for, it. For just marketing. Say it. It's hard to mark American society and culture, although we like to think of ourselves as progressive and we have made a long, long strides. It's hard to market a woman who looks like a dude. Not all of them do. Not all mm. of them. Not not all of them do. But I think, and I'm trying to. I, I don't think seem, I know. I, don't I think seem I know ignorant, what you're saying. No, I think I know but, what you're saying. I, you, you you sound ignorant. I'm gonna be honest with <laughs> yeah. you. But I I know. I think I know what you're saying. I think what you're saying is from a marketing perspective, most people genuinely go for a sex appeal or go for right. or uh, go for a talent or go for a skill or go right. for something, whereas the WNBA does not use those kinds of marketing strategies. Right. I just think they're not marketing, period. That's what like, I think. It's, That's not what even I think. A, it's not even like marketing That's what sex. I think. Like you have Skylar Diggins Smith, you have even Maya Moore. Mm -hmm. Right. Like if you're gonna if we're gonna go off of that, right? You mm -hmm. do have players that are very talented and are also very attractive in the league. Yeah. yeah. And so no they're not doing 
anything. But really. this is my thing. It, honestly, is the WNBA as visually entertaining to watch as the NBA or even even college basketball? They're not dunking. But you don't have to dunk the play, it. I, the, uh, this past playoff was pretty exciting. That's, I yeah, the, play, the playoffs were good, but they, it that's only the that's too. only because <laughs> the of playoffs the, are the exciting. Word. It's only because of the added pressure. What yeah, it, of, it, of winning? Like, and I like the three game series because it's more pre- the five game series or seven rather seven game series in the It's like all right, you could go down two two zero and come back. Mm-hmm. If you had a three game series series, you down one. That next that next game is win or go home. Yeah, it's win or go home at that point. You know, I think that's more. I think that's more exciting. I think that's what they have. But again, the NBA when they had hand checking in, right? Mm-hmm. The game was slower, and people were clogging up the middle, so you couldn't. You didn't get those exciting dunks, and like you. Now, they take that away. The game's a little bit more open, mm-hmm. and you do need to do the same thing with the WNBA. If you lower the rim, this, I think the scoring will go up. But I don't. I don't think it's a scoring thing, right? Like I think it's an overall. I think it's visually what you're looking at and how it's presented. Like, even the way it's shot. When you look at cer- how the, the cinematography of how certain WNBA games are, are, are shot, even down to the, to the commentators, there isn't, I don't feel like there's that level of excitement when I'm looking at a WNBA game. Like, how you have your, your special uh, panelists, or not panelists, or, or um, what's it called? Um, um, commentators, analysts. Analysts. That's because you don't know them. Analysts. Analysts, right? <laughs> Get but even, but even, I there. know, but that's my point. Yeah. Why? I, I, I just don't. I, I feel like if you're trying to brand uh, a, let's say a, a subsidiary or a parent or, or, or yeah, a child company, yeah. you, you might want to do some interchanging, right? Like if you know that I don't know, name a, a popular. I'm having a brain fart. Name a popular commentator right now, like. Anybody? Let's let's say. Wait, let's, why not just draw a blank? Yeah, I did too. Look, I did too. Or, Doris yeah, Doris Burke. That's Doris Burke. Okay, so she Doris Burke. She came up in my head, but I couldn't think of her name. It, it would just, it, I just think it needs to be interchangeable. Doris I think, is dope I think, too, yeah, But that's what I'm saying. You need someone that's going to 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 make make it pop, like make it stand out more. You know who I think may help the league once, it's going to be it's gonna be a few more years, but I think he may come and help in some way. I think when Kobe's daughter yeah. Gets the league. Yeah. He's going to be more involved in yeah. terms of helping. I mean, even now he's doing that in terms of helping women's basketball. Like yeah. he's more active. He's been having some of the WNBA players train with his daughter, mm-hmm. and then that's been in social clips. But then gets like, what was it? I think it was like um, rookie of the year trained with his daughter. Yeah. And ha- and I think that him being involved because his daughter wants to play will help with gaining more exposure. But I think that once his daughter gets to that point, she's going to get into the league. Yeah. I think that when she, that happens, he's going to get more involved. I'm actually really interested in seeing, because we see a lot of like NBA players when they have sons, mm-hmm. and it's like focus on their son. Yeah. This is like, it's I different. think this is like the first time where like a top player has a daughter and his all attention on the daughter being like a top player. It's different. It's, it's very different. different. It's different. Even, did you guys see that clip where Kobe was coaching his daughter? Like they were watching a game. Yeah, so the next and, game. Yeah, and he was, was, he was yeah. explaining the play to her and she got it. She's like, oh no. So he's like, yes, now you got it. Like I love that moment. It's the mom of I, Yeah, I love, I, <laughs> yo, when I tell you, I looked at that video about a good three times and just smiled like, yo. She's got the mama in. mentality. He gave in. He tried. He was going for that boy. Yeah, had yeah, four girls. Yeah. He said, you know, I'm here now. I'm here now. I'm here now. <laughs> we, we here. Fuck it. So. But I think it's cool. I think no, that I, he's I, I like it. I, I, I like, like it. it because, like I said, a lot of, a lot of times when NBA players, they have kids, it's like the focus is on the, the, the boy going to the league of NBA. But he's been focusing on the team with his daughters and everything like that. So I honestly mm-hmm. think once she gets old enough, when it's around that conversation about her getting into the league, Kobe's going to get more involved. You know what the WNBA needs, too? They need, like, a KG. Of yeah. Pat Beverly or, like, a Rasheed Wallace. You need so, that rebel. You, 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 yeah, you need that. Like, yeah, Britney could have been a great one. Britney could have been it, a though. great one. The same, way that, the same way that you just said that you wanted them to be, like, not you, but, like, you said that men mm-hmm. want them to be pretty and sexual and, like, all that stuff. It's like... You gotta you gotta pick and choose what you, you want. Still, if you want, you, you can still be pretty and, and talk shit. No, yeah, but no, but no, but, but no. If with the KG mentality though, like they may look at it and be like, "Oh no, that's just just like a dude." Well, that's the like that's it's, the, it's it's there's just it's it's as a, a double as, standard. It's, it's a double standard as a woman. No, but as a woman mm-hmm. who's played. 
Mm. Well, no, but it's just like when <laughs> when women compete, that. right? <laughs> just so like anyone compete. When you get on that court, you're a different person. Yeah. But sometimes people, if you want that cagey mentality where it's like an asshole, da, 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 it may not look ladylike to Yo, some Candace people. Walker did it's that, a double standard. And Candace Walker started cursing at girl women on, on the court. I would love it. Uh, yeah, I, would, I wouldn't be mad it. at it. I wouldn't be mad at Scarlett it. Scarlett Dickens out there, shut yeah, up, I, bitch. I, 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 I honestly wouldn't be mad at it. I was like, like I oh, could, my God, I, what is this? You, you remember when, when the girl tried to run up on Britney and, 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 and kind of looked at her like, all right, never mind. You know what? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool. I'm cool. She was like, yeah, come on. Come on. I dare you. Like, Oh, that would be great if Candace Walker did that. Yeah. But it stuck out of hand. Get the I'm not saying Nah, that. nah. You know Candace Parker could not do that. Money. At the time well, she was money now. She's she, big money. But now. not just that. She was she was a focal point in terms of the WNBA yeah. at that time. She had to keep she a had certain the whole stature on her back. She had to keep a certain stature, yeah. right? I mean, well, you know who's Rossi like was playing there, but like at Tina that time Thompson she was, was like one that. of she was one of the staples. Yeah, but when you, when the they were doing the whole when when, when when uh Lisa Leslie leaves, right? Yeah. She leaves. Who is the new face? Like they Tina needed, Thompson. yeah. They, but, but that's what I'm saying. There's always a new face of yeah. someone that they need to put in back of the WNBA to make it them stand like out. It seems like it's always has and to be three. It's always three. It's always, always three WNBA three. players, always. and they always have to just like, okay, let's just focus on them. Yeah, always. Tina, but you always. Know, back then it was Tina Thompson, Cheryl Swoops, and Cynthia. And Cooper. Cynthia Cooper. They were all on the same yeah. team, yeah. so it's couldn't really like spread the wealth. I mean, you had Teaspoon in New York, and you had Becky in New York. But then it was just like, uh, what's this girl, Jackie, that was coming out of Minnesota. I forgot Jackie's last. She led like the NCAA in scoring. She yeah. was nasty. Jackie Styles. Jackie but Styles. Jackie Styles is that. Yeah. She was nasty. Yeah. Oh, her crossover was nasty. But yeah. she had these ugly ass bangs. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't, couldn't market that shit. Man. Well, well, also Candace, also Candace Parker too. You guys, have to, we have to give yeah, credit too. Say, she say, came from no, Tennessee. But say something about Tennessee. Candace Parker. No, something. she went to Tennessee, and we, we all know the notable coach. Say yeah, bet, something yeah. about Candace Parker. I'm not gonna say anything. Oh, I bet you wouldn't. But you know I what? Bet no, you I wouldn't. did. Oh, I hear that butt coming. Yeah. Her feet were kind of hammered on that ESPN magazine. Oh, knock it off. <laughs> knock no. it off. Don't be that guy. Take your shoes Don't off. Don't be that guy. Yeah, take your shoes off. Take your off. shoes off. When's Let the me last, see your feet. When's the last Let me time? see your yeah, feet. Let's sure. see your feet. I ain't making my socks on. Not good. Take your socks <laughs> off. Yo, you no. know you know those shit are, are horrible. Because when yeah, I, I said check your it. ankles, basically, he's like, wait a second. Yeah, y'all keep saying that, but my feet are not ugly. You look like you have ugly feet. I don't. You do. You do. I don't. If you don't got ugly feet, show it. I can tell. I don't want to show it right now. Why not? You say you don't have ugly feet. I do. It'll glisten when you show on the camera. No. It's nice. They all kind of dry right now, but no. <laughs> you corny. Um, I'm corny. Everybody take, take, take your shoes. Corny. Take you your corny. shoes. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> um, Listen, you got to talk that talk, but uh, it, it ain't girl, real until I see it. Yeah, word. I love Candace uh, Parker, man. She, <laughs> she's not going to love me. I'm too short for her. And you're married. How yeah. about that? Don't love Candace Parker. You're married. <laughs> like, that, stop. That, 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 like, one, that one. Stop. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then there's that. <laughs> Disclaimer. 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 Forgot about that one. Forgot about that wow. one. Wow. Wow. Let me check. Oh, dang. This is on my hand. Oh, Yo, Nas is great. There, there, Nas is that great. <laughs> Every other excuse outside of the, 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 the one that you should be focusing on. Uh, she's taller than me. Oh, no. Nah, I'm too short. Sure. I can't show my feet. I can't show my feet. Yeah. Uh, she's going to dunk on me. Mm, Not on the it. fact that, she oh, wait, I would dunk on on she would dunk on you. She would she never. Would, she would. She would. Word. Yo, I, we did. That, we have to set that up one day. Hundred percent. I have to set it up for WNBA, and you have to take the charge too. I'll take the charge. Yo, that would be the funniest thing. And in, in, that would oh be my hilarious. God. You have to. Oh my you God. have to put your hands behind your back and take the charge. Yeah. Can you make that face. <laughs> <laughs> and you gotta fall back though. You have to. Don't just well, try to stand we'll there and be mat, tough we'll about it. Put a mat it. behind yeah, you though. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. y'all, y'all move the mat once I so I hundred percent would move the mat. I'd be like, <laughs> he'd be right there. I got it. Yeah, me. yeah, I'd move that back. I move that back. Oh man, guys, we gotta get into serious mode. <sighs> yep, serious mode, serious mode. All right, so uh, last week, uh, our government, uh, I guess, assassinated. I will say. Um, Iranian, what was, what was he, a general, military general? Top general. Uh, yeah, decorated military leader, Qasim Soleimani. So I'm, I knew I was going to mess it up. I practiced this about Soleimani. Five, Soleimani. Jesus. Soleimani. Sorry. Soleimani uh, with an airstrike. <laughs> now, uh, Trump went on to say that this person was a very, very bad person. Um, he actually murdered a U.S. citizen. And this is what prompted the strike with uh, on, on Iran. Now, I know, I, I read a bunch of different things. What I read was the guy that was murdered, uh, he wasn't like a tourist or anything like that. He was actually um, 
in espionage or something like that, I, uh, or double agent, something that he was involved in, which I guess prompted him to get killed or something. We can fact check that um, if you could. Also, you got to speak to the significance of Kasim. Like, he was second to the supreme leader. Well, well, that's 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 the thing. Um, you know what? You know what? I was talking about this with, with uh, my parents, right? And it's like... You want your 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 president to to be tough, right? Like you want him to 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 take charge, and you want you want to know that you know if something happens, yeah, my my president w will not be afraid to pull the trigger. I just don't think that this was the right trigger to pull. <laughs> like, well, number one, why, <laughs> why, like. I understand the, you know, I understand the, the, the policies behind it. I understand the, the, the how it, it does fuel the economy. I understand how um, it does help with re-elections. I, I get all of that. But at the end of the day, like, we legitimately could go to war. Like, these are real, this is like a real thing. You know what I'm saying? The thing that's odd to me, though, is that Iran, I, Iran is pretty much saying, hey, we don't want a problem with you, specifically U.S. citizens. We don't want to harm you. We just want to harm your administration. But <laughs> we are following the rules of engagement. That being said, you attacked us. We have to retaliate. Those are the terms of war. After that, we want it to be a dub. Do you guys find it interesting how Russia is a strategic ally of Iran and they, yep. con they condemned, and they the, condemned. the strike? Mm -hmm. Of course they did. Yep. I mean, of course, they're going to go with whatever... Are they still in, in uh, advantage of the, they're what still they in the want. Ukraine, right? They're still over there in Ukraine. If you actually think about where the American bases are, yeah, we surround Russia. Mm -hmm. Think about where, where we're in France, England, Iraq, South Korea, Japan, and we. I'm forgetting somewhere else, but we we surround Russia. Well, we're in no. the Middle East. Too. Yeah, we that all our bases yeah. surround them. <clears throat> we can get to Russia. That's who. Everything is for. Yeah. Don't ever lose that, lose track of that. Our biggest enemy is the USSR. I agree. It's always and been that, though, and, that, and it's all, and it always will be. Yeah. 100%. Now everybody said, "Oh, there's gonna, be, there's not gonna be a draft. There will not be a draft." I it's, don't think, I don't think there'll be a draft. I just think that um, the way it's going, this is shaping up. Do I think it's gonna be a world war? Like no. Like the definition of a world war, like when you really think about a world war, is like a world war, like countries versus countries versus countries, and yeah. we're well, going they, to war. Yeah, they all have to agree on. Correct. I don't think this will be a world war. Do I think it has the potential to be a war? Yes. Like when you have your president saying stuff like this, the United States just spent two trillion dollars on military equipment. We are the biggest and by far the best in the world. If Iran attacks an American base or any American, we will be sending some of that brand new beautiful equipment their way without hesitation. He then goes on to say, Iran is talking very boldly about targeting certain U.S. assets as revenge for our riding the world, ridding the world of their terrorist leader who had just killed an American, badly wounded uh, many others, not to mention all of the people he had killed over his lifetime, including recently. Hundreds of Iranian protesters he was already attacking our... Uh, he was already attacking our embassy and preparing for additional hits in other locations. Iran has been nothing but problems for many years. Let this serve as a warning that if Iran strikes any Americans or any uh, American assets we have, targeted 52 Iranian sites represent, uh, representing the 52 American hostages taken by Iran many years ago. So uh, some at very high level and important to Iran. The Iranian culture and those targets and Iran itself will be hit very fast and very hard. The U.S. wants no more threats at this point. Um, when, when, you, when you have your, your president talking like that, I like it. I'm not going to be honest. I'm going to be honest with you, rather. I like it. I just don't like it because it's this situation. Like, I don't like it. Are you yeah. telling what you're gonna do? That, and, that, and, that's, and, and that's what I'm saying. Like, keep that same energy off the books. <laughs> I don't. No, nah, he was. That's like when you go out to the club and so you see. You don't think I remember what happened to my man? Yeah. Now you like, and your man gonna get it, yeah, bitch. Like, y'all know what it is. Y'all know what I'm about. And and that's what I'm saying. Like, I just, I, this this is just another for me. It's just another example of why I he's just not presidential. 
He's just not presidential. It's just, it's just not. Well, no, that's that's a tough talk. All the presidents do. Like, the di- we're, we're going to take force. We'll take the appropriate. The actions. difference is, the difference is, there is a, a manner and a way you conduct yourself when delivering messages like this. When you're talking about world war, air quote Listen, world man, war. Windex couldn't get any clearer than that. It's clear. <laughs> it's it's very clear. The the, the, the difference uh, I mean, is Windex does a good job. <laughs> the difference is though, I don't I don't know that uh he's really fully prepared. Oh yeah. These I listen, mean, on, they on. attack the Shia Shia control Iraq. Let me just like kind of give a brief breakdown of what's going History on. History lesson with Nas. Iraq is two Muslim groups, mm-hmm. or three really. Shia, Sunni, and the Kurds. Okay. Shia are majority uh, from Iran and parts and half of Iraq. Mm-hmm. They're the smallest group, one of the smallest groups out uh, in Islam. Because mm-hmm. like Shiite means Shiite Ali. It's a group of Ali. That's okay. who they follow. Then you have the Sunni. So when you see like all oh, Iraq declared all uh, foreign troops out of Iraq. Mm-hmm. That's a, a Shiite-based council. That The Sunnis and the Kurds still want us over there because they know... If the Shia are in control, they're going to go back and start killing everybody because that's what Saddam Hussein did. Mm -hmm. Saddam Hussein was a Sunni, Mm -hmm. but he controlled all of Iraq. When they attacked the embassy in Iraq, it's a Shia-led militia group that attacked us. Mm -hmm. Trump goes, those dudes work for Iran, so we're going to hit their general. (laughs) I get it. I, I just... I'm hoping this wasn't one of those, hey, let's let's just act right now without there being some sort of strategy in back of I this. I mean, let's also keep in mind every president that's been in office during times of war stays in office. Yeah. That, but that's the other thing, that's too. That's also because, something to keep in mind. Because you started this, now this is like... You got to finish you it. You got to finish it. So, and I know that that clip went viral online about... Um, Trump sitting in, I think it was in Trump Tower, I was not thinking about it, where he was talking about uh, uh, Obama being in office and Obama would have to start a war with someone, specifically uh, Iran, in order to uh, win the presidency, win presidency yeah. because he would be desperate. I just, that that's crazy. And we talked, <laughs> off, we talked off air about speaking things in, into existence, right? And then that happens. Um, what do you guys think about that, though? Do you think, honestly speaking, do you think this was legitimately for the country, or do you think this is a ploy to keep him in office because now we're in the midst of potentially being at war and, and now you got to go through the, the, the trials of it? Well, what I will say is, I mean, we can't confirm that no matter what yeah. our opinions are, but what I can say is, like going back to what Nas was saying before, um, I don't know if it was on or off camera, but war is profitable. Mm-hmm. It is very profitable for the rich and the powerful. Yep. It is a uh, rich people start wars, poor people fight in the wars. Yep. So at the end of the day, you know, when wars happen, it sometimes it is depicted to be in the best interest of citizens, but it's only in the best interest of certain people's pockets, yeah. mm-hmm. certain people's friends, certain people in power. Mm-hmm. So we always have to keep that in mind, that <clears throat> war, such as via propaganda, will always be shown to be something that may be for the benefit of us, but in actuality isn't. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's, it's kind of, it's hard to tell too, because we only get fed certain information, right? Mm -hmm. We don't really know why certain people are fighting with, like, of course we know to some extent, right? But we really don't know certain things because the government's not going to tell us, nor are the other governments are going to tell us. And it's kind of in a situation now where most Americans, it doesn't even matter to give them the right information. They have this perception that everyone in the Middle East is a terrorist. Mm -hmm. So no matter what us as, as, as U.S. citizens or the government does, many people will look at those individuals as being bad, period, no matter what. Yeah. I just want people to take the time to educate themselves on what's really going on. Because there's there are people that don't even know that U.S. was actually instrumental in, in creating ISIS. Yeah. Like, people don't even know that. So yeah. it's just kind of like taking the time to understand the history of our dealings with the Middle East and how mm. oil has been a very big part of it and other resources, um, and understanding just... Not just the Middle East as a whole, but even just our own relationships with the individual countries. I think it's so important now because now it can just be like, well, all those people attacked us during 9-11, so it doesn't even matter. Like, I, I think right now it's like 
everything's f- like fueled by emotions, and we have to spend a lot more time actually fact checking yeah. and really understanding what's happening before anyone says anything or jumps Agreed. on board with anything. Yeah, Agreed. you gotta realize that the American government has always used false flags. Mm-hmm. Like if you go back to the X Y Z affair, right? And I, Chris, can you just check this X Y Z affair? I think uh, was when we went to war with the French, mm-hmm. right? The whole that was a false flag. The American people, even back then, didn't want, didn't knew that war is not in our best interest. Mm-hmm. We still, we have to make money. We have to sustain our our life over here. Mm-hmm. It's always in the government's best interest to go to war because, I, like you said, it fuels the economy. Mm-hmm. You know, so the everybody's like, oh, this is something new. What Trump is doing. It's not new. It's not new. He's following a, br- a blueprint. That's yeah. that. But that was my 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 reason for the question because that's how I think how programmed we are as citizens, right? We automatically went to, oh no, you're doing this to be back in office. You're doing this to stay in office, or you're doing this because for whatever reasons, we're trained to think like that. Well, this is a it's a violent country. It's always it's always been violent. Yeah. The way we started was violent. Yeah. No no taxation without representation is tyranny. That's mm-hmm. because when we sent representatives over to England and said, yo, uh, I have something to say, and England said, you can shut up because you're just a colony. Mm-hmm. You have no say so in, in, in the parliament. Yeah. That was, that's an issue. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so our country has always been violent. This is our MO. This is this is American as Ameri- as apple pie. Check this out. So I was having a conversation. I, I'm having a lot of conversations. You're having a conversation. You're talking to people? Oh, my. That's I know, new. Right? You're talking to a lot of people. Oh, so that's new. I, I, thought, I thought this was interesting, um, but it made a lot of sense. So a friend of mine said that um, America or America, yeah, I'll just say America, are viewed like the same way we view like Al Qaeda and all these other things. We're viewed like that. Yeah, we're violent. Like, do you ever yeah. think about that? Like, we're, I, I don't think we've ever taken the time out to kind of step outside of our own lens just because of the our programming, be it CNN and, and all these it's other not news just, outlets. It's not programming. It is a egotistical nationalism. Well, yeah, it is. It is. But what I'm saying is we're still programmed to, to, to think a certain way and believe yeah. that, hey, we're being attacked. You ever just wake up one day and feel like oh, maybe we're doing the attacking? <laughs> like, oh, man, people and I'm not. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, like we no. people for every bad thing people say about the United States, right? And our country has a lot that we can get right. We can yeah. we can do better in, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. People can't really name a person of color that led another country. Like name a, a black female who, led, who was a prime minister of a, of a European country. Name a black man. Name an Indian man. Name an Asian dude outside of. Japan to uh, China, Malaysia, and the Philippines, who led a, a country. Mm. It, it's it's kind of hard. We had Barack Obama, so like, like, oh, we're, we're set back. We're we're going backwards. It's like no, man. If you take time and look at it, yeah, we have a lot of problems here. And I'll be the first one to tell you, we got a lot, a lot of issues, but we're also kind of pr- progressive. You know, but we, we are be, taking a step. But back. I think we'd be more progressive if we actually admit our faults and what we can mm-hmm. get better. Sorry, I see your shoe. Oh. <laughs> um, I keep moving. Yeah. That's why I was saying it's kind of an egotistical nationalism. And I say mm. it in the sense that, like, it, it's oh, with this sense of pride also comes this aspect where it's like, oh, we're the greatest, we're the best, but we aren't in certain things. Yeah. And we we were before, but it's like, we're. I feel like part of us is like so stuck on the past. So mm-hmm. We stopped creating. We, yeah, we stopped creating. We stopped focusing on having the best education. Like we, there's certain things that we just stopped focusing on. And I think that also like, it's kind of like one of those things, like we may be our greatest support, but we also will be our greatest demise, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Okay, it's, it's, a, it's a fine line that we have to walk, man. You're talking about a country where you can come from another country, have nothing. And make something. Zero. And make it. And make it. And mm-hmm. be someone. You can't do that everywhere, man. Yeah. Like people, people don't, they take it for granted. Mm-hmm. Like Americans, re- and unless you have traveled, and I think everyone in this Thank God everybody in this room has had an opportunity to travel outside of the United States. Yeah. You don't know what it's like. Mm-hmm. Like, people say, oh, yo, the cops, are, the cops are doing this, the cops are doing that. It's like, dog, do you understand what happens if you tell a cop in Mexico, in certain parts of Africa, in certain parts of Europe, yo, S my D. Mm-hmm. You're not coming home. They're gonna club <laughs> you. To, they're gonna club you to death. It's not just that. You can't. In certain countries, you, you can't even. If you are out of the quote unquote norm, you can get killed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Period. Let, let you go over to Buckingham Palace and think you're gonna fuck with them guards and all that other stupid <laughs> shit that <laughs> people do in the movies. They, they you, <laughs> you will, will, you will find out the, the the hard way. Yeah, I mean, the, like, I hope the government understands what is going on here. I mean, I'm pretty sure they have some idea that people the checks and balances in place. And you know, and that's I, to me. And maybe you're right. That's the ego in me. That's the American in me. People are jealous. We have checks and balances, bro. Like they. That means something. Like dude, I don't think people understand what that means. Even, our, our army can't just come up and start a coup and say, "All right, we don't like Trump. We, he's up out of here." This is why the CIA is in place. The CIA is in to watch government officials. The FBI, like they don't talk to each other. They don't share information like that. It's checks and balances. That's that's how we keep everybody, you know, on the up for the most part on the up and up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do you guys feel though? Like, like even me driving into the city today, I was kind of like, I thought things. You know what I mean? Anxiety. Like it's it's one of those things now. Like even for you guys that are in the city, like I worry about you guys. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just like, yeah. I like we're, no static. I feel like we're right back here. I, you know what I'm saying? Like you, I always feel like you. There's always that thought of it. Like even uh, I say this a lot when I think about like those major holidays. Obviously, like New Year's or. Parades, so parades, like yeah. something like that. I always worry about it, but now I feel like, like yeah, at any moment, any moment, something is gonna happen, and it's just like we're here. I mean, I can't lie. I it gives me a little bit of anxiety, but I already have anxiety, so that's, yeah, that's nothing new. But yeah. I also, you know, you can't live your life afraid. Mm -hmm. You can't. Yeah. No. Like you, everyone. I hate to say this. Everyone's gonna die at some point, mm -hmm. some sooner than others, yeah. I, I, unfortunately. <laughs> but you can't live your life afraid. And I think that you know, for the most, for the most part, I mean, for all the crap that we've been involved with since nine eleven, it's been fairly safe in New York, yeah. despite yeah. the fact that there are some things that happened, right? But mm -hmm. for the most part, yeah. like it's been you, it could have been a lot worse. Yeah. Um, but I just think that, like, you know, you, this is something that we have to deal with momentarily. But imagine the people who have to live this day in and day out their entire lives. Yeah. Knowing that if they send their kid to school, they they may, the school may get bombed. May get bombed. Yeah. It's you a know? real, it's so a real it's, thing. It's, it's, it's also something that we had the luxury of not having to worry as much anymore. Yes. Mm -hmm. When there are people who are feeling the anxiety that I have or we have, and they feel it their entire lives, and we're just feeling it this moment yeah. right now. Yeah. And be grateful, man. I'm I'm grateful. I'm I honestly I, I I'm certain that Iran will will respond. Like they've made it very very clear they're going to respond. <laughs> they're going to. I'm 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 hoping. Uh, what's the what's the uh, what? We got, Trump will make Iran look like New Mexico. I understand that, but what I'm saying is I'm just thinking about <laughs> like we were talking about the memes and shit, right? And I'm I was one of the people that that did laugh at certain memes, right? Yeah. Like the, the 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 fucking future memes and all these memes, like oh, might as well get in line to go to to enlist and all that. All of that's funny, right? Just because it's it's internet shit. But when you really really think about it, like they already sent three thousand troops over there. Then they sent another four thousand, whatever the amount is. So now we're at like seven thousand or something stupid. And that's just in the preliminary stages of, yeah. of this of this quarrel. Like th this this could go much bigger. Like I'm thinking about people that we even game with are in Iran right now. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like be, be kind there's, to those service people, man. They, yeah, they're making the like, sacrifice that so we can sit up here and talk trash. It's, it's there's this one video of this guy. He was a little bit bothered by the younger generation making jokes because he was like, "While well, you guys are at home, basically making jokes." He's like, myself and others are going out here, and some of us are not going to come home. Yep. Like, you guys, and, but I do understand that some people utilize jokes as a way to deal with traumatic yeah. things, and yeah. I get that. But then also, oh. I do understand, it's like, you know, if you're going to have the jokes, then at least level it with the amount of support for those who yeah. are going to go Definitely. over there. Like, Definitely. send messages to them and support them, because they are, they are putting their lives out on risk while we are com we are sitting Literally. here comfy. Yeah. And you're sitting watching or listening comfy in whatever chair you're in. And so I, I agree with the guy. It's like, it's, it's I don't know. It's, I also feel like, so, especially young people didn't, 
I think also another thing that there's a gap where it's like there's a lot of young people that don't remember 9/11. Say it. Say it. Keep going. They don't Keep remember going. 9/11, so mm-hmm. they don't have that same mentality. They that haven't same, lived through that it. same worry, so they, they never had to deal with anything like that. Yep. I remember it vividly, I remem- and I, I remember, remember even like this day. everyone in my classroom were like wondering if they're gonna go home and their parents are gonna be home. Yeah. You know, and some kids' parents didn't end up at home. Mm -hmm. So I think that there is a generation of kids that never had to deal with anything traumatic like that. And that's why we're getting a lot of jokes from them. But I'm telling you guys right now, for those who are listening to that age, you don't want to relive 9-11. You really don't. That was a very horrible day. And just because you say, I'm sorry, Brandon, just because you say thank you to a a troop or a service member uh, doesn't mean you have to support the war. You can be against the war and say, listen, man, I understand that you enlisted, so I thank you for your sacrifice. I may not agree with the war. And you don't have to curse the, like, y'all remember, after that, uh, when we invaded Iraq, people were cursing at, uh, uh, like, soldiers and... You murderer, you kill us. Like, they don't fam. have a choice. <laughs> I don't think they're people making realize us, that, though. Yeah, they're making a sacrifice so you can yeah. have that freedom and curse at them. I don't think mm. people realize that the moment people enlist in any sort of armed guard or service, you legitimately are the government's pop, uh, property. And when you, like, even when what, you're on, uh, was it, a uh, reserve? Reserve. Like, yeah. the, you could get a call. call. I could you, be reserved. Be like, oh, yeah, go. I could be reserved right you're this very second, player, and they're going to yeah. say, hey, you got subbed in, fam. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I, yo, I'm going to holler at y'all later. I, yeah, I'll see you I later. Gotta go. Like it's no it's a very very real thing, and to East Point, that's why something you go ahead. I I really don't think people take it serious the way that they should. Well, the one thing I've realized is that even even people who were alive during 9/11, like if you weren't in this tri-state area, some people don't you didn't get it. understand yeah, yeah. the impact. Yeah, you didn't. Like get it. they don't understand that like for those who are in New Jersey, Connecticut, New York, even PA or the other areas, DC, where they don't understand the impact that it took because mm-hmm. they were watching it from a TV screen. Yeah. And yeah. none of their family members were affected. Mm-hmm. And they were just kind of... And, and I'm not saying that in a, in a bad way, but that that's just what it was. No, you're right. It's, it's, in, you our, know, it's in our backyard. People from Connecticut, they'll be like, oh, yeah, I remember, but I don't quite remember. I remember the class who I was in. I was fourth yeah, I grade. I remember the class. I remember my teacher. I remember her, she stopped to turn on the TV. They told us all to go home. Mm-hmm. I remember there's kids who they took to the principal's office because I think their parents were on one of the planes. Like, I remember... Yeah. I remember all of it. But it's unfortunate that some people, because they weren't around this area, it's not as ingrained in their brains as much. Listen, all I know in, in Jersey City, I'll never forget it. I was in high school. I, it was the la- it was the last period, or it was before lunchtime, rather. I remember seeing the planes hit. I remember then all of these different uh, just things happening in Jersey City between random bombs going off, then them finding other terrorists. And that's the other thing that I learned about, like at least where I'm from. I didn't realize the amount of terrorist activity in jersey city like my father was like across the water that's what he said he said it's right across the water that's literally what he said he said it's right across the water what did you think he's like you didn't think they wouldn't be you know use this as a safe haven to do whatever they want to do they can literally look across to see where they're going to go at. literally literally and it's like it's a scary thing to realize that you know a, a few years later with with starting a new decade we're right back to square one having to deal with it yeah. and i just you know i want i want people to kind of take it seriously like lives could really be lost casualties will be met and, and the casualties will be us as civilians like let me be yeah. clear we will be impacted if it goes next level you you don't think like even me me i'm so paranoid even as iran does all these press conferences and, and speaks about hey we're not uh we're not going to harm you i said i don't believe that shit we in war <laughs> I don't believe I watch too many movies and, and, and have lived through. I don't believe it. Yeah. I don't believe it. You think I'm stupid enough to believe that you guys are going to go on national TV, do press conferences and tell me exactly what you're going to do and how you're going to attack me. Isn't Hell no. Is it crazy that now we kind of have doubled fear? In the sense that it we is. fear those who come in, and then we also fear those who are already, oh, already here. here. Already here. And, and already here. I'm not even talking about people who've, who've came over years ago in here. I'm talking about the fact that we have... The sleeper mass, cells. Not just that. Mass shootings. Like, well, the yeah. fact that there are... Now it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a couple thing. Like, yeah, yeah. all this violence. Um, and I'm not, like... And, when I, and that's why I had to clarify and say those who are here. I'm not talking about people who are from other countries. I'm mm. even talking about U.S. citizens that yeah. we have to fear ourselves as well. Yeah. Uh, but I... <sighs> I don't know. I just think that right now is such an important time for people to really educate themselves. And don't just look at one media platform. Please do not do that. Don't yeah. just watch Fox News. Don't just watch CNN. Like, actually look at multiple sources and you, you start 
putting things together. Um, also, another platform that's really good to learn, Vox, Vox Media does a really great job mm -hmm. explaining things in a more neutral position compared to other platforms. Yeah. They literally just say, okay, here are the facts. This is what's going on. Um, or they'll be like, they'll do explainer videos. I think, like, really take the time to learn this stuff because I, I, ignorance is will be our demise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. That's actually a really, really good point. And I like if, that. And if you're of age, man, go out there and get your weapon. <laughs> Exercise your Second Amendment. Yeah, if I could, I would. So. Yeah, yeah. You can. Um, but you don't live in New York. Yeah, but that's a process. No, it's not, not that hard. In Jersey? Not that hard, young people. Go out there. If you live uh, above New York City in Westchester, Rockland. You know what it is? I'm, let, me, let me tell you my thing with it. I, if I'm being honest, my thing with it is I feel like even with having a, a weapon, I feel like, how do I put this? I feel like I'm putting myself in harm's way just by having a weapon because of fear that I would have to use the weapon and then have to go through the course of having to explain why I use the weapon. Well, Does that make sense? I mean, if there's a zombie apocalypse, uh, you better oh, well, stay away different. from me. Yeah. You better stay away from me. Are you saying that already? I'm going to come to your if house like, If there's a zombie apocalypse, I don't want Brandon on my team. I'm gonna come, uh, oh, listen, y'all uh, playing. He's saying he's afraid of shooting. Uh, no. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not talking about zombies. I'm talking about just, like, people. Zombies, oh. I'm already, I, listen, I'm, if you know me. <laughs> Brandon's like, I've been if, training on PlayStation listen, for the I past have, eight I have, years. I have been ready for this shit for about a good 10 years. The Thank you, Walking apartment. Dead, and everything else that's trained me on what to do with the zombies and or oh, what not man. to do. But guys, I'm serious, man. I got I got uh, military meals. I'm not playing with y'all. <laughs> like, oh I'm my serious. Gosh. I'm going to order a gas mask. I'm, I'm going to be ready. I just, I just want us to kind of uh, pivot a little bit. I know we were very, very deep and heavy, but yeah. we actually want to start um, implementing our fans into our content. And yeah, for definitely. 2020, they actually had a few questions for us. If you cool. guys don't mind answering, let's see if Nas, I'm going to get Nas. It depends on the question. Them. I don't know if I'm going to answer it. <laughs> Show 20. me your feet. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Uh, Okay, how do you all remain high level of consistency when your team gets increasingly busy? I love the fact that everyone with grassroots is popping on their own, but y'all continue to grow. This is from Jay Nolan. Wait, what was the question? I wasn't paying attention to Jay Nolan. <laughs> Jeez. How do you, how do you answered, stay did I answer the question? How do you stay consistent with so much activity going on and the team being so busy, although we are all in uh in our respective fields, doing individually, whatever. we're all doing stuff, popping, you know, living well, life out here. I, How do we stay consistent? I think honestly, just because we're we're driven and we're focused, right? Like we really are vested. Like we come in and and try to really just make the best possible content that we can make for us. I think the other thing too, though, we don't go with like the norm conversations, right? Like we go with what feels good for us and what we want to talk about or shed light on and and we just mesh well in certain Brandon, aspects. stop with this panel bullshit like, work hard stuff we i hate do. When, i hate when panels say that we have plan and structure guys that's what we do that we is plan the truth. And structure no, yeah, I'm but even, but even you, I know. you're like work hard do, but, be but happy say your prayers <laughs> eat your vitamins your prayers, I'm, I'm, take I'm, your I'm, vitamins I'm not gonna go that, down that panel, that panel BS I'm not gonna crap. go down the, the, the list be of happy. everything that we do drink we milk we plan we, yeah. we literally drink, day drink, in yeah. day drink out day. talk every single day starting from Sunday to the next Sunday we are figuring out what we're gonna do we plan we have structure we have people that do certain roles and we have documents to keep us all structured. There I have go. Aaron and Brandon. <laughs> 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 that's, that's how I get things done. Thanks, Naz. I'm glad. Thanks, I'm, mom I'm, and dad. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, y'all gonna stop calling us mom and dad too. <laughs> no, but serious, that's really how I feel though. I feel like that's we all feel. come in and, and just rock out. Outside the structure and all that shit. But I think a lot of it does. The one thing, the the one commonality commonality that everyone always says when they see our our, our program is they say, um, "You guys have a lot of chemistry." That's the one thing that everyone always says. Yeah, how long have you guys known each other? I'm like, oh, here and there, certain age uh, years or whatever. And it's like, you know, you guys mesh well together. And I think that's very very uncommon. In, in our business. We know a lot of other platforms that they don't get along with each other and like they they don't Yo, I almost owe you ten years. Word, right? I'm yeah, surprised. How did you make it this long in my life? Um, but <laughs> planning I, uh, and structure. <laughs> <laughs> planning and 
structure. Planning and texting me. Texting me. Yeah, word. Um, but yeah, I just think that we 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 do. I think there's times where we've had beefs, right? Like we, everyone's had beefs. I think we do a good job of still reeling us all back in. And making sure we, we refocus. I think that's what it is. Uh, me was getting Michaela on our team. I'm so happy we've got another woman on our team, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, but the good thing is I grew up with an older brother. So I grew up around guys. So I know mm -hmm. how to be around guys. But then mm -hmm. also I need to have another woman who thinks the way that I think mm -hmm. to kind of help with. More our, of the our, our macho, our, our macho machismo. planning. <laughs> no, but also like you know, men and women think differently. That's you know, true. there are certain that's conversations true. I'll be like, eh, "That's not a good way" because yeah. it makes women look this way. Like yeah. we need more of that. Yeah. But I also like kudos to all the guys on our team. Like you guys have been very open and considerate and and sensitive to certain <laughs> topics and conversations. Sometimes not as much, but. Mm -hmm. Not, it's not that you guys weren't being sensitive. You guys were just speaking your opinions, but yeah. you did it in a way that was very respectful. I think that we keep in mind that as we give our own opinions, you know, we do have to be mindful of how it may affect everyone else on the team. I agree. So I think we do a really good job with that. I agree. And that wasn't some panel bullshit. Y'all just going to let that fly? Yeah. Oh, what mine? That was mine the, was specific. That, I think we got we got another woman on our yo, team to help with the mindset. Yeah, got the, got the, got the That's beige, very specific. The beige, I don't get beige no, brigade. If you want to have a successful team, guys, make sure that you have a, a, few a women Michaela. On your team. <laughs> Michaela, <laughs> few, yes, have women on your team, please. Well, Michaela's ours. So, <laughs> just, oh my gosh, can I just tell y'all like the structure of everything has gone up one hundred ten percent thanks to Chris and Michaela. Yeah, get yourselves Chris's and Michaela's, okay? Well, That's get you no, need. get your own Chris's. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah, can't take our own. Sorry. If we're going to lend it, it's going to be five five sacks yeah, yeah. per day, day Word. rate. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we, we need Never a little mind. money up in here. Five sacks, day rate. I thought you said something else. <laughs> you said five sacks? What? No, no, five five sacks. I'm not, five say sacks, I'm not saying what I heard. I I'll tell y'all off, off, off air what I thought you said. That sounds like what? The, five logo. stacks day rate? All right, I'm going to just say it because I, I, I believe <laughs> in transparency. No, no, no. I, I five believe, stacks day rate. Five I, stacks day rate. Five stacks day rate. <laughs> in transparency. I thought you said five stacks date rape. That's what I said. Wait, what? That's what you heard? Yeah, that's what I looked at you like. That's not what I heard. As long as Nas heard it, I'm all good. That's not what I heard. <laughs> all right, let's see what else we have going on. Uh, the baby. The baby. Oh. The baby. The debate. Well, I, think she, uh, I think she was talking about the question, but oh, since shit. Brandon wants to go to debate. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. I didn't know how many questions. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Thanks for that question, by the way, too, Jay. Okay. Also, uh, this question I'm going to modify a bit because it also includes a person who um, is not here, Wilson. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to modify a little bit. But basically, like, how has it been? Like, how has our lives changed since we've been doing grassroots and we've all been showing our faces on camera and, and, and giving her our opinions on camera. I'm still poor. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, like not uh, much has changed. That's from Demurry on I had to fight to get a parking space out here. Like I'm, I'm life's great. <laughs> like I don't know. Uh, no, I'm, I'm still broke. Yeah. I'm still broke. Still, still broke. Still going to work. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, uh, how's my, Oh, everybody who, who doesn't know what, what, you know, the amount of energy it takes to make this possible, they swear that like I'm super famous. For real? But not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's why he's dressed up like this. Yo, you I'm paying attention to Nas in 2020. <laughs> I just want to be clear. The year the of growth. growth. The Is moment the moment you start the year off with ripped jeans where your knees are not even out, they're just ripped. Everybody, yeah. everybody yeah. else is eating. I don't want to eat. <laughs> well, my story is a little different. What's yours? What's yours? Yeah. What's yours? Actually, this podcast did change part of my life. Yeah? Yes, and it's uh -huh. not going to be no panel BS. Um, so the reason that I even got to broadcasting on TV started with because of this podcast. So I ha we did this podcast. We had Obviously, we had the video components. NBA 2K League was looking for someone to host their uh, Twitch show. And they use me, like they looked at me on camera for grassroots as a way mm. to, to figure out what should be a good on camera. That's fire. So from <laughs> that, that was my first, that was technically my first like real content was, and, and real as an R-E-E-L, not R-E-A-L, because I've been doing this content stuff for 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, real, and they utilized that for NBA 2K League. And then NBA 2K League stuff is the reason why I got Cheddar 
And then now, because of Cheddar, that's why I got that CAA signing. So mm. it all started with grassroots Get video. Get that straight filming Wikipedia. That. <laughs> so... <laughs> Personal but just, life, but that just shows. But that just shows that even if you don't get the massive numbers, hey, that's like, it bullshit. Can, you you were destined for the shit. You knew exactly no, what you it, wanted but, to no, do. I, no, you I, see, I didn't want to do pan, broadcasting. Pan, come on, I want I want to talk about you start. like you're not here. Pan the camera to me. I, I didn't yeah, start like I'm not I'm not I'm not doing all this shit. E planned this shit out. She knew exactly where she was going, what she was doing, and executed. Stop all this bullshit. Nah, She's man. Grassroots gave no, me the did. life I needed. Get the fuck out of here. No, I didn't say. I didn't. Hey, I, didn't, I said part of my life. I know, I've been I'm doing joking. this content stuff for, for yeah. Get it years. right, but that, Wikipedia. But the, that's but, my point. That's but my point. The video, the, but it, it kind of goes back to like you know how a lot of people they they do they create content, they do stuff, and then they get upset when they don't have the numbers. And they think, yeah. oh, it's not going to be useful. I'm going to quit. Mm -hmm. Don't quit because you can utilize that for other aspects of your life. Mm -hmm. The video components were basically my reel for broadcasting. And it actually taught me how to be more comfortable speaking in front of a camera and talking to people and talking in front of people. So I think that it's so important that, like, I think that this podcast, even though it's you, you both are saying you're broke, it is clearly changing your lives in a different way. I know it changed your life. We can't say what yet, but it definitely changed your life. <laughs> and it changed your life. And it changed yeah. every single person's life. But that's what happens when you get a team together to build something from yeah. nothing and make it dope. I and I'm going to say it's great. I don't care what y'all think. I, I want to come over great. and I'm, I'm going to hug you after this. That was beautiful. I want to hug. Uh, all right, whatever. Um, <laughs> um, see, I'm, I'm see, joking. Now you see what I get it, right? But yeah, but <laughs> if, if, me, if, if, I'm, if I'm being honest, this, no, the, the show me. has changed me, right? Like, it's it's very clear. If anyone that knows me knows I'm super, 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 super private and super, yeah. like, you know. Yeah. Yeah, people that know me know me know me. Like, I'm super private. So... Throughout the course of like just, I guess my life and, and career uh, and sharing those those intimate moments, I think this platform did definitely help me. Like, but I don't think a lot of the stories that people know about me now they would ever know if it wasn't for this platform. Honestly speaking, mm. and I think a lot of it had to do with um, you guys actually sharing your experiences. If you guys remember in the first maybe. The first maybe five or six episodes where uh, where uh, Nas and, and 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 Wilson came onto the show, yeah. um, a lot of those episodes people would say, hey, "You guys are sharing," but it's not a lot. It's like, and then we had that one episode where we all literally shared just a bunch of crazy <laughs> shit. And I was like, "Wow, man!" Like I was looking at y'all like, "Oh shit!" Like, all right, well, fuck it, I'll share. <laughs> and then and then we just started sharing, and then it felt comfortable, right? Like it felt like it felt organic. It felt like. I know we joke a lot about it, like this being a place of peace, but we honestly kind of operate like that. Like we don't have that judgment thing. So I think for me, that was like the biggest thing for me is is coming out of, uh, I guess I'll call it like yeah. a shell and coming out uh, behind the curtain and and being comfortable in front of the curtain. I'm, I'm happy you came out on the show, to yeah. be honest with you. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, what happened? Oh my God! What happened? Well, Nas, nah, talk to us about you uh, <laughs> speaking. <laughs> we're gonna cut that. <laughs> speaking to your out. religion, <laughs> like how you've yeah, been very that. open with speaking on your your religion and your personal faith. How has that been? Has that was that something that you've always done, or is that something that you just started doing like because of the podcast more? Speaking on my... Just, like, uh, openly speaking on your religion and speaking on your personal faith. Is that something that you've exercised publicly? Or is this, like, the first time that, like, you've been... Because you've been exercising it often, just based off of the natural conversations and flow stuff. But how has it been for you for that? Has that been, like, a change for you? Oh, hold on. And, and I want to piggyback that question. The, your, your your core, like, your 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 brotherhood right or your friends your family whatever you have mm -hmm. how do they view you now seeing you on this program and talking about your religion uh to answer E's question first no i've always kind of talked about my way of life just only when asked i don't i don't like to come off uh preachy or mm -hmm. get on my soapbox because that's not my place if you ask i'm pretty i'm pretty open with it you know because i think my the change that i made at 21 brought me here. It, br it actually brought me to grassroots. Without it, Lord knows where I would be. In the streets. <laughs> I, would, no, I wouldn't be in the streets, but I'd be, definitely, I, I'd be jammed up. Clapping cheeks. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I would definitely be jammed up. You'd be jammed up. up. You'd be jammed <laughs> up. I'd definitely be You were definitely a scumbag. I'm happy that uh, I wouldn't I say a scumbag. <laughs> I exercise. <laughs> 
you know, what I needed to exercise at the <laughs> whenever okay. the moment arrived, arose. Uh, and then how my, how my family views me, they, you know, they all think, they love it. They love the show. They think that is what, <laughs> did not, you know, without being too hubris, they think this is what the world needs. Mm. You know, and they, let, they like Brandon, they love Aaron, and then they don't really know the, whole, the rest of the team, but if they got to know them, they would love y'all too. They think they love the show, they love it. And my mother watches it all the time. She called me during the middle of her watching an episode, like, "Yo, you tell Brandon that blah blah blah." I'm like, "I'm not doing all that." <laughs> <laughs> you know, tell Aaron I agree. I'm mean, I'm not doing all that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, thank you for watching the show, but yeah, I'm not doing all that, Ma. The, the funny thing is, y'all for, for the viewership, y'all laugh probably if you're laughing at this part. But he really does talk to his family like that, mad dismissive. Remember we. His sister FaceTime me. He's like, "Yo, I'm I'm busy right now. Like I ain't got time for this." I'm like, "Yo, it's your sister." Parents like, "Yeah, that's what." Oh, yo, she she's the same way. But they, you know that they actually prepared me. They they helped my skin get thick. And yeah, okay. like oh, you know, he's he's an asshole. He's he's tough like that. He just doesn't care. Well, you aren't. Well, <laughs> when you grow up with an older sister and an older brother and older cousins who made it their purpose to make you cry yeah. as they beat you in a video game, yeah, and they would not stop until. They saw a tear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all laughing, but that's it. It's real. Mm -hmm. It's so, you know, so it kind of prepared me for like. When y'all crack jokes, so let me see your feet and your ankles are ashy. Mm -hmm. But they are, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like I like it. I like the, I love the show, man. It, it gives me a, a release. Okay. I feel you. My brother and his friends used to make fun of me until I cried, but those same friends that made fun of me then tried to sleep with me. <laughs> <laughs> so who was won? It? Who had the last <laughs> laugh? <laughs> That's to say. Uh, Wasn't <laughs> expecting <laughs> that one. <laughs> who came out on top on this one, big guy? Wow. That, yo, if Aaron said that, who came that, out on yeah, top? That, <laughs> that, that unintended. Uh, big guy. That word. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. Who came out on top, big guy? <laughs> um, hold on. We didn't hear from Wilson. So what how did how did that work for you like did, has it changed your life or not here sucker <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah I'm, I'm honestly excited man 2020 <laughs> is gonna be it, it's shaping up to be a fucking phenomenal year um i'm really 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 excited still like, here I'm, i feel re-energized <laughs> i feel i feel good i feel good i'm, I'm excited had, like, about a weekend off, so that's well, yeah, that was the other thing. That's period. the first weekend I've had it off, and I don't know how long since Thanksgiving. But you know, who's counting? Yeah, but that, but all right, think about the time. <laughs> I like that, right, Jay? Think, think, <laughs> think, think about the time. I'm, no, what I'm saying is, like, uh, you're talking about show. I'm talking about off show. Like, yeah, I know. His off, off. He, yeah. turned, he turned 40. It's different being it's, off grassroots, but being off off yeah, is a off, little different. I'm That's talking everything. about off wanna, off. I'm everybody, about off, Brandon off. turned 40. You have the, nice hands. The day after, uh, <laughs> the day after Christmas. Wait, did you? Two was that? Two days after right. Christmas, you turned I, 40. I, oh, is that we don't? Hold on, because I was ignoring you. I didn't turn 40. I didn't turn 40. And, and you're older than me. That's a that's a bold face lie. Just saying. Who are Bam? Older. Mm -hmm. Like the two baldies are the oldest ones. Coming at my head. And on that note, thank you for watching Grassroots Podcast. <laughs> yeah, Hit the not notification Yo, button. <laughs> 2020 year of growth. <laughs> oh! nah, hold on, hold well, on. What's that line plugs. looking like, though? You got hair plugs. I don't got no hair. And, and since when you have curly hair, your hair wasn't even that good. Yo, you're doing something. The hate, Spray you it. are doing something. The when the hate don't work, they start telling lies. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing something. Guys, I'm I don't trust men who come in one week with, bald and the yo. next full grown in layers. Yeah, hang on. That's <laughs> tell me your secret. Is that that? Is that the glue man? I, I, miss, I miss my you, hairline. You can see the grays up there on the top too. You can spray gray in too. No nah, man, Why they would, do that. It's wisdom. They do. Yeah, I'm yeah. Like, yo. I got sprinkles coming in here like little grays. Oh, no, I'm, I'm wisdom. Fuzzy bad feet, baby. Look that up. Oh, my God. On that note. Yeah, word. Um, I, as <laughs> always, guys, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for supporting. Thank you guys for being with us. And um, kudos to our 151st episode. I'm really excited about baby. it. And um, be sure, as always, to subscribe. Hit the noti notification button and be notified for our latest to the greatest episodes. And please subscribe to our newsletter. Yes. That is, again, where you will get the latest and greatest for grassroots, merch, events, and everything else culture from us. Yeah, our upcoming event will be shared there first. Yes, it will be and shared so there first. Share, well, share there first and our group chat. 
Yes. You go over to a group chat, you get it first first. Then newsletter is second first. And then everywhere else is third first. Word. And shout out to the group <laughs> chat, man. The group <laughs> chat is, is fucking great. You know, we don't we don't p- p- uh, put enough respect on the group chat's name. So I want to shout out the group chat. The group chat, yes. we started that so long ago. And and they just rock. Like, yeah, they, I really do feel, yeah, I really feel like they get us. Like, it's I feel like, yeah, right? So shout out to the family, man. We love yeah. you guys. They've been supporting um, us since day since one. Since day one, yo. They, keep us in check yeah definitely. they tell us what they definitely. like what they don't like yeah, they continue definitely. conversations after if they mm-hmm. think that one of us says something crazy they'll even at us and tell us yeah, we're crazy love it and we have further conversations and if you want to be part of the family join because they are the ones that get everything first 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 and, and, and i will say uh we did preference it by saying that they are family and they are kind of like us meaning they're kind of assholes so if you say something that that doesn't make sense they're going to call you out on it i assure you i feel like if you work in the media entertainment industry you got to be a little bit of an asshole. A little bit, little bit. You kinda have to. Bit. You can't be to. you can't be too nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Beyonce's not too nice. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Rihanna's no, no, not no, too no, no, nice. No, 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 no. No one is too no, no, nice no, no. and super successful. You can't. You yeah, gotta you have can't. thick skin and sometimes you gotta Tom, Tom somebody. Hanks is <laughs> Tom Hanks is nice. Tom Hanks is nice. He's nice. But that was random. Um That's <laughs> Okay. Tom Hanks is nice. I'm Aaron Ashley Simon. <laughs> I'm Brandon Killer Beach Hall. I'm Fuzzy Bad Feet. Nasty nose. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs> grass, 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 grass.